In this tutorial, I'll use the BCC lens flare filter to generate a light source and lens flare that we will track automatically to the camera motion of a clip, right in Apple Final Cut Pro. BCC lens flare is included in Boris Continuum Complete, which is available for Apple Final Cut Pro in Motion, Avid, Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro, Autodesk Combustion, and Autodesk Discrete Systems. The BCC lens flare filters are also available as part of the new Boris Continuum lens flare unit for just $99. The lens flare unit supports Apple Final Cut Pro in motion as well as Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro. Any purchase of a Continuum unit may later be credited towards the purchase of the entire Continuum Complete package should you wish to expand. Here I have my Final Cut Pro timeline with the clip I'll use, in this case a shot of a lake supplied by Artbeats. I'll click on the Effects tab and open the Video Filters folder, then the BCC OpenGL folder, then drag the BCC lens flare filter onto my clip in the timeline. Filters in the OpenGL category draw their real-time performance from the graphics card in your computer. Now I'll double-click on it and open up its Filters tab to access the filter controls. From here I can access the PDF file that comes with every BCC filter. Before we set up the look of the lens flare that we want to add to the image, let's track the camera movement. Open the Motion Tracker group to reveal the motion tracking parameters. We need to find an appropriate area to track on the clip. The area should have high contrast and remain in the clip for the entire shot. As I scrub through, I can see that this area seems appropriate. I'll move the CTI back to the first frame and click on the Track on the Fly checkbox to enable the motion tracker. When you do this, the filter displays the motion tracker boxes over the image clip. I'll hit the Tracker Center KF button and position the inner box, or target region, over the area I'll track. I can use the target width parameter to adjust the scale of the target region. The outer box is the search region. The filter uses it to search for the tracking point in the next frame, so the area in the target region must be found within the search region on the next frame. Now I can select Mark, Play, Every Frame and let the motion tracker do the work. When tracking is complete, there'll be a line drawn across the image indicating the path that the camera took. Now I'll disable the tracker by clicking on the Track on the Fly checkbox. In the Apply parameter, I'll change the pop-up from None to Light Source. Now the light source will move along with the camera movement and remain locked down in the scene. I can use the Offset X and Offset Y parameters to position the sun in a new location. Now I'll cycle through some of the presets that come with this filter to find a look I like. This preset looks good, so I'll use it as a starting point and manipulate some of the parameters from here. I'll take the global intensity down a little and increase the global scale. Now I'll click the button next to the pivot point parameter to enable the on-screen point position widget. The pivot point controls the other elements in the lens flare. I'll click the canvas window to position the pivot point and I'm ready to render. For more information on any Boris product, or to download free, fully functioning 14-day trial versions, visit borisfx.com.